Well, hello everyone. Here we are, week five. We've passed the hump. You're almost done. You guys are doing a great job, and um, I think I've said this to you before, but you are the quietest, quietest Concordia class that I've ever had. <laughs> um, you're just all very uh, responsible, self-reliant, uh, self-motivated, and it's nice to see in a class. It's uh, nice to see in master's students, and I appreciate that, and appreciate you making my job so much easier. Um, so this week is interesting. It's just building on what we've already been talking about, which is memory. And I think you'll find digital dependence eroding human memory very interesting. Um, uh, because digital dependence, we are seeing it now. We're seeing it with the kids and we're seeing it with adults as well. And I think we have to look at what information is okay to throw away and what information is not okay to throw away. Um, I have to say that coming from a generation where I had to go, you know, to a library or a school to card catalogs and encyclopedias to look at information that the plus of the digital age is that I don't have to do that anymore. That information is at my fingertips. Um, and, uh, but one of the problems with the digital age for me is that I used to memorize, you know, everybody's phone numbers and all the, I, I couldn't tell you the phone number for the pharmacy now, or, I mean, I can for my significant other, but uh, I never remember my daughter's phone number. I know it starts with 212. I just push my speed dial button and there it is. So uh, if I need to get hold of her and I don't have a phone with me, then that's kind of a problem, isn't it? So things to look at when, when uh, you look at that article, I think, I just think you'll find it interesting. The other thing that I noticed in the classroom that I'm sure some of you, some of you noticed too, especially with the older kids, but, but you may notice it with the younger ones or as they grow watching them. I came from a generation where we uh, knew how to find information and we knew how to fact check information. And I think the thing that we're going to really have to watch for now in the digital age is how students are fact checking. And do they know how to navigate the web? A lot of times um, when students start to navigate the web, they don't know how to choose different phrases that can lead them to uh, where they need to go. And that's a study skill, you know, and a research skill that they, they really seem to have lost that I think is very important for us to um, look at with our students. The other thing is, is that the kids aren't 100% sure how to make sure the information is factual. And some kids even just, they see it up on the web and they think it's factual just because it's there in the digital universe. I remember it was really funny um, last year. Uh, I have an Instagram feed and uh, one of my students uh, saw my Instagram feed and you know I had like a couple thousand followers or something like that. And he was like, Oh, Miss Wood, you know, I didn't realize you were famous until I saw your Instagram feed. And I laughed because I'm like, dude, I'm not famous <laughs> at all. But to him, I was because of how many followers I had. And that's interesting, too. It's their perception, you know, their their perception of this, this, this digital reality. And I think that's something that we need to help our students navigate and figure out how to find this factual information and and how um, people use um, images to uh, you know <coughs> uh, get somebody worked up uh, <coughs> inflammatory images and that they may not be seeing the whole picture and that these are things that they need to look up they also need to look at <coughs> excuse me algorithms and um, and discuss that and all of these things, I think, are going to be interesting, you know, when we're looking at this in education and how kids um, hold on to ideas and, and um, memory. Today we had a, a staff development meeting, conference period meeting, and we were looking at the work of Fisher and Frey, who um, have just uh, done the, the book on um, effective use of the gradual release of responsibility model. And I found that to be very interesting with what we've been learning in class in this brain-based research class about um, focused instruction, guided instruction, independent learning, um, collaborative learning. And we are seeing that um, students are doing, um, they're doing better educationally wise. They're able to measure these things now um, based off of what they're learning and they're finding that 
focus instruction is great and teachers should have focus instruction and that you may have to go back to focus instruction time and time again to make sure that kids know the lesson and why they're doing what they're doing, why they're learning what they're learning. But they're finding that collaboration and reciprocal teaching with students is really like um, a, a high percentage of raising education as well as um, student-teacher relationships, students liking you, uh, which doesn't mean you have to be lenient. You can be strict and be liked too, but there's something about the likability and the relationship between them that really bumps up education and higher learning. So if you haven't been looking at those books yet, I'm sure you will be looking at them in the MyAd program um, or the research of uh, Fisher and Frey. But uh, you know, Long Beach Unified is a huge school district and they're going to be uh, using uh, their strategies in the classroom. So I'm sure you're going to be hearing more about this as time goes on. So let's talk about uh, this Wednesday. So this Wednesday you have a partner and I've already picked your partner for you because I didn't want you to just pick friends. Some of you might have like gotten lucky and got somebody you, you, you know already, but I picked your partner for you. And so you are going to go on your sync session on Wednesday night this week. We've had them back to back because we moved last week because of all the back to schools that were going on. Uh, once again, I do not want you stressing about this. Um, I've put a max amount of time down and I do not want you getting nuts. Um, but you are going to be doing collaborative learning and independent learning because focused learning more than 15 minutes like one of these videos is really the way to go. Uh, so with your partner, you have directions and I've put the directions, I'm going to put the directions in the announcements right now. But if you look at the live virtual meeting, I ask you that first, if you haven't worked with this person before, you do not know this person, uh, once you guys decide how you're going to hang out, and this is you and your partner's choice, you can Google Hangouts, you can IM, you can Skype, it's your call, whatever you want to use as long as it works well for you and your partner. Um, so the first thing that I want you to do is if you haven't worked with this person before, introduce. Um, take a moment to say hello, share some personal information. If you do already know this um, person, take a moment to warm back up and just uh, catch each other up on what's going on. Then you're going to discuss briefly with your partner the bulleted topics that I've listed in the collaborate section of week five. 20 minutes total, 10 minutes per person, max. So 20 minutes total for the pair. Look over the work from this week, learning versus retention, timing is everything, retrieval, arts and movement project, and um, briefly touch on your brain compatible unit, unit and what's going on there. When you're done with that, the activity is, is I want you to choose an online brain game to play with your partner for 10 minutes. Some examples are words with friends, scrabble chess, something for memory and brain. Uh, you can choose one for your partner if you guys are okay with that as long as it's easy to access and free to both of you. Once you're done playing for your 10 minutes, go ahead and sign off with your partner or say goodbye. And then I want you to go to Luminosity, uh, uh, sorry, Lumosity, and um, you're going to click on the link that I have there and you're just going to open a free account. Don't do any of the paid account or upgrades. You're just going to do a free account if you already have one. Some of you are familiar with it. Lumosity is a memory site to work on your memory. There are three free games. They're very short. One's called Pet Detective, one's called Star Search, and one's called Word Bubbles. And I want you to go ahead and just um, play those um, and see how they feel. And I particularly want you to pay attention to how the music makes you feel when you play Star Search. Uh, so I want you to have fun. I want you to collaborate with conversations related to our class. And then I want you to have a few moments of relaxed brain time playing with your partner and then go ahead and do your Lumosity job. And then that's it for this Wednesday. Um, and I hope you have a good learning week. I'm going to start grading things on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And um, if you need to get hold of me, you know how to do so. And that's about it. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.